Um, all right. Thank you very much, guys. Um, so Google Slides doesn't auto-advance. Um, I found this really annoying, so you guys are going to have to help me through this presentation. I've got 10 minutes. I've got 30 slides. That's 20 seconds per slide. The animation is working, so as this clock ticks down, I want you guys to help me by when it gets down to um, 12 o'clock and it explodes, I want you all to shout go. So hopefully we can give it a test run now. Ta-da! Boom. Cool. So who am I? I'm Dom Green. I've got a yellow t-shirt on, so hopefully it um, means I'm approachable. If not, I'm really sorry. Um, you can get hold of me um, at Dom Green or mail at domgreen.com. Um, I work for a company called Improbable, and I've been doing Go for about two years. Um, I'm not the most in-depth gopher, but hopefully I'll be given a high level of... Go. Go. Yeah, thank you. Um, so, honorary mention of Go 113 before we move on to 14. We didn't have a um, what's new in Go 113, so two things I'm going to call out. The modules improvements, lots of improvements for modules. We've got the Go private, so we'll be able to access private repos with modules, and Go proxy to be able to um, have your own proxy and therefore be able to access. Thanks. So next one is dealing with errors. Um, in Go 113, we have this new thing called the unwrap method, which allows us to unwrap and wrap um, different errors. Um, here you can see that um, when you do fumpt error f, you can wrap errors to return just a standard error rather than a specific type which also means that um, you can start using things like is and as in the language. So rather than doing the if error equals error not found, you can, do, you can actually just say is it one of those errors. Um, similarly, you end up working like this so that when you return from your package something like the error permission, you don't have to return, you can just return a standard error. Thank you. <laughs> um, so going on to go 114, we're very nearly there. 94% of the way complete. We have a few outstanding bugs. The ones in red are actually blockers for release. This means that we're probably a couple of days away still, but there's lots of new things in the language. Over 500 issues closed already, so hopefully there's a lot of things to go through. Yeah. Oh, I turned it off. What did you guys do? That's actually, oh, okay. So first thing, damn it. This. Right, overlapping interfaces, the first really big thing, overlapping interfaces. Here you can see um, two interfaces in Go 113. What would this do? Does anybody know? Is the timer ticking? The timer's gone. All right. Okay, let's keep going. It would break. So having two things with Fump Stringer, you can't do that because both have a string method. It starts timer again. Amazing. So they both have the string method underneath the interface. Um, you can't because of duplicate method string. However, in Go 114, overlapping interfaces uh, means that uh, we can do this. So the language specification has changed from the fact that an interface T um, can have methods specified on it, and then you can embed another interface into it. Um, however, all the exported and non-exported methods from it would come apart from like you just saw there because you can't have two methods with the same signature. Um, however, the Go 114 is changing the language so that we can have this. It basically it now says if you have two interfaces with the same method, as long as they match, you can actually create a union of those two interfaces to pull up into a single interface. This is a union. So it's kind of like that, all things from all of the underlying interfaces. So this is what overlapping interfaces looks like. Um, we can actually do this now, and the program runs, printing out Hello Playground. So we have a doggy, which is a mover and a barker. Um, and this actually can have the stringer, string method. So you could just do doggy.string, and this would compile. Um, ooh. So this, effectively, what happens, you have the mover, the barker, the doggy. Doggy in inherits a mover and barker, and you end up with this. So it's created a union of the two, and now you have a string method, you have a move method, and you have a bark method. So um, this actually comes in really useful, specifically with this kind of use case. Um, however, um, if you, sorry, let me just go back. If you have two things with set different um, method um, signatures, so an int and a string, you won't be able to do it. It still will break. Um, one of the things with Go 114 is the last release to support Mac OS with 32-bit release. If everyone's updated to um, Catalonia, 
Um, you find things like this. All your apps stop working because it's not 32-bit anymore. This really upset me. Other languages are doing the same, so we're not alone. Um, so yeah, last release to support 32-bit Darwin. Oh, vendoring. Um, there's been updates to vendoring um, with Go Mod. If you have a vendor folder at your top level of your directory, it will default into vendored mode. This means that it will go through the, the packages that are in that folder and not end up with this weird world where you're using the modules file and the vendored <coughs> folder. Oh, you're not doing very good. Um, the other thing to go with Go Mod is the fact that we now have a new flag that will allow us to um, stop doing things like that. That was using a tools file at the top of your repo so that you could um, bring in with the mod um, things that you didn't have in your actual program but needed outside. So things like Stringer is the example here. Um, with the flag go mod file, you can then give a file name where you want to do this. So I would end up doing go mod, then mod file tools. Um, and in there, I would add Stringer. I'd probably add some other things um, like the mocking library that we had before. So this allows you to have multiple um, mod files in the same repo and separate those out. The other things that adds go mod Go Insecure, a lot like the Go Private and the Go Proxy that we saw in last release. Um, more improvements, basically, for modular Go. Um, this allows you to talk to an insecure um, package registry, a modular registry. I'm not sure quite why you would, but it's there. Um, but yeah, use a secure one. Um, the other thing, Go Module can now support downloading from Subversion, because everyone uses Subversion. So why not add it as a supported, sorry. <laughs> Sorry if you do, um, but yeah, this hit us in a couple of projects um, because of other um, SVC rep repository type things, so Subversion is there now as well. And the other thing, Defer, um, Defer, if you don't know, is a way to um, have things execute later in your program. So you set up a Defer, and when the scope returns, you will um, ca call that Defer method. Basically things for like closing files or closing connections. Um, the fur in Go 114 has been improved, so um, the runtime has been kind of souped up. You can see this graph here, which I took off Twitter, showing that as the Go version has been released, the amount of time that it takes to actually invoke a defer. I think this is called the basically inlining it a lot better when it compiles. Daniel Marty would know way more about this than me, um, but unfortunately, you get me. Um, the other thing with Defer, um, Bartek from the Thanos Project helped me do some benchmarking, and it shows that um, in his benchmarked example, he's saving 91% um, by, by the basic language upgrade. Um, so yeah, thanks very much to Bartek. He's just here. Hey. Um, so the Defer, why is it really important that we speed up the Defer? Things like this. You basically have a mutex where you want to act on something with the lock. If your um, defer is slow, then you end up slowing down other things that are also dependent on that lock. Um, and here's a better example from the um, crypto TLS library in, the, in Go. Um, now, asynchronous um, preemptibility of Go routines. Um, this is apparently really important, um, but every time I tried to read this, I couldn't quite figure it out. It kind of made my head hurt. So if anyone in 20 seconds can tell me what Go routines now are asynchronously preemptible are, that would be great. If not, I'm just going to stand here and hope you all know more than me. So, yeah. <laughs> Apparently, it really helps with deadlocking. That's all I got from the description. But if someone could tell me afterwards, I'd be really happy to know what it actually means. Um, but yeah, I've got 20 seconds, so I kind of need to um, buffer some time. You can come and tell me in a minute. Thank you very much. Um, so the other thing that we're adding to the library, we have a new pack package called hash map hash. This basically takes a number of bytes and will return a, um, a hash of those bytes. So you can do this, for, for example. Um, these three things end up returning the same thing. You can seed the hash so that every time you spin up a new Go routine, you rehash. Thank you. Um, TLS is dropping support for SSL version 3. We're also, by default, um, going to be tier, um, 
dropping SSL 3 and TLS 1.3 by default now. Um, before in 1.13, you could turn it off with a Go debug environment variable. You can't anymore. Um, you need to use a different way to do that. Um, the other interesting one, um, I quite like this one, um, cleanup. So there's a new t.cleanup um, function in the, in the testing package and the benchmark package. This allows you to much more efficiently clean up after running tests. Um, and what it, what it actually does is um, it runs all the tests and the subtests within that test and then cleans up. How does it do that? Well, at the minute, to clean up tests, you'd probably do something a bit like this. You'd have a defer. However, now you can call t.cleanup um, and do it in the place. It's one of the reasons why it's really important. It's in context of what you're cleaning up. So rather than deferring, um, having it in context is quite nice. Go. Uh, so uh, every six months, Go release a new version. Go 115 proposal is already open. It's released in May 2020. Hopefully someone else can do this lightning talk next time in, in May. Um, and yeah, there's a lot of proposals there already. Some really nice improvements. Um, go. Um, won't be a Go talk without talking about Go 2.0. What's quite interesting is all the things that are coming into the language now in 1.13 and 1.14 are all about testing and exploring what Go 2 would be like. So for example, the versioning, you saw in the modules in 1.13, uh, better error handling, you saw in 1.13 as well. Um, adding generics may come soon because you need to experiment with what it's like before Go 2. Um, that's my nearly 30 slides in nearly 10 minutes. I am Dom Green, thank you very much. And um, any questions? <laughs> so I think the lightning talk was supposed to be 15 minutes. I did 10, just so you can either ask or um, tell me about something in the language that's released in 114 that I didn't cover. So if anyone wants to grab a microphone, <laughs> crowdsourcing it. Uh, so does anybody have something in 114 that I didn't cover that they thought was really exciting. Is it cut? When's it coming out? It will, should be out by the end of the month. It's, it's apparently overdue. But yeah, to be released soon. Anyway, if you can tell me what the preemptible async go routines is later, that'd be great. Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone.